Hello and welcome to Washington Exec's video series. I'm your host, Amanda Ziede, and with me today is Bill Wooten, president and founder of C3 Integrated Solutions. Thank you so much for joining me today, Bill. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for having us. Of course. So the Defense Department recently issued an interim rule change that essentially embeds CMMC, or the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, into DOD contracts after the 30th of November. Uh, so Bill, who does this impact? Well, it pretty much impacts anyone who is doing work with the Defense Department. Um, as in the ramp up to CMMC, the uh, reporting was that there would be up to 300,000 companies across the country that would be impacted by this. So whether you're, say, Huntington Ingalls building an aircraft carrier or the 3,000 or so companies across 48 states that are in their supply chain, every single one of them are going to be impacted in some way by this new rule. So what does this new rule do? Actually, this rule does a lot. It um, First thing is probably most important, what it didn't do. It didn't change the original clause, which was DFAR 7012, which had the original set of cybersecurity standards in for contractors. What it does do is it adds three new clauses in there, 7019, 7020, and 7021. Right. So what's in them specifically? So... The important part when we talk about 7012 is that nothing changes. All of your current contractual obligations around NIST 8171, FedRAMP moderate equivalency, and clauses C through G are still in place and they're not going anywhere. When we talk about the new clauses, I'll kind of take that in reverse order. CMMC is uh, written up in clause 7021, and that's pretty much everything that we expected and everything we've been hearing about for the last year and a half. Five levels of CUI. If you hold any CUI, store, process, or transit it, you're going to be a level three company. If you have a much lower level of just federal contract information, you're gonna be level one. And everything else that was involved in the program up to this point pretty much came out as advertised. What 7020 did was it actually did a little bit of a cleanup in my opinion. It provided for the government to have access to systems, facilities, and personnel for the purposes of doing audits and assessments. And it also ensured that every contractor, when they issue a subcontractor, a subcontract, they need to actually uh, ensure that that subcontractor cyber maturity is the right level for that information that they're giving them. Finally, 7019 though, is, was the one that was a little bit of a surprise. What it did is it kind of institutionalized the DCMA audit program that's been going on for a year or so now. Uh, it's been pretty successful where the government has gone out and done audits around this 8171. That program is now in place and is going to stay for the foreseeable future. What's new is that every contractor, if you don't get a DCMA audit, still needs to upload the results of a self assessment for NIST 8171. So can you help us understand the timing around all of this? So timing is a couple of different pieces. The CMMC component is gonna be a long rollout. It's gonna be five plus years. They're gonna take time to get the infrastructure around auditing and assessments ramped up. They're talking about only doing 15 contracts next year and this fiscal year in C CMMC. Um, so that's gonna take a while to ramp up. However, the rule goes into place November 30th. And the understanding is now any contracts award after November 30th, 7019 clause is going to apply. So that's going to shift the timeline for a lot of contractors. So thank you so much for all these insights, Bill. We will be catching up with you again soon for some further analysis around this. So I appreciate your time today. Great. Thanks. Always, always happy to talk about it.